of a thing called implicit differentiation. And we'll kind of talk about what that is, but um, it's just differentiation. It has the same rules, only we're going to have different variables in this one. Um, so just to refresh the, you on the, on the rules again, um, the derivative of x to some power is equal to n x to that power minus 1. The derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. The derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. The derivative of a constant is equal to 0. The derivative of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the derivative of the function. The derivative of a function plus or minus another function is equal to the derivative of that function plus or minus the derivative of the next function. The derivative of a function times another function, because it's the product rule, is f prime times g plus f times g prime. Um, the derivative of f divided by g is equal to g times f prime minus f times g prime over g squared. I um, guess I forgot the derivative. Of <coughs> Sorry, the derivative of um, <coughs> of sine is equal to cosine. Derivative of cosine. Is equal to negative sign and then maybe the final one is the derivative of a composite of functions f of g of x is equal to f prime times g times g prime or f prime of g times g prime so that's a chain rule. So that's pretty much all the rules that we've had. There's been a couple other trig rules that we've had, but that's pretty much all of them. <clears throat> Those don't change with this process. They stay the same way. If we look at some different things that we um, that we're trying to do on this, we got to think about notation and what this notation means. This notation just means take the derivative with respect to x. So perform those rules on the variable x. <clears throat> That's what that means. dy dx is the same thing as y prime. It's the same thing as f prime of x. It's the same thing as d over dx, f of x. All those are the same notations, so you can use them interchangeably. <clears throat> d squared y over dx squared is the second derivative. So we can do all of the stuff on any of these problems. We can change the variable. We can change the variable. Um, we can we can adjust these. You know, if we're if we're thinking about this. Um, <clears throat> This is perform 
the rules on the x variable. So think about it that way. We're going to talk about what that means. So we're going to look at some examples. So let's take a look at, at this example. Notice this is still take the derivative, but now it's saying take the derivative with respect to y. <clears throat> so y is the variable that we're concerned about. If we're going to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to y. The rules don't change. We still drop the power down, reduce the power by 1. We still leave the 4 alone and take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So that's why the negative goes away. That's the derivative. This is the derivative of this function. So that's what that equals. That's just the derivative. All this is saying, this is saying take the derivative. with respect to y. That's all that's saying. Takes the, take the derivative with respect to y. So we could do a problem like this. Given that y equals 4u squared plus 5, find the derivative of that following function with respect to y. So let's look at that. Let's look at this part first. Let's look at taking this derivative and let's talk about what that means. If you notice, the first part is pretty easy. That's going to be 6u squared. The next part is, is interesting. Notice that this is a function inside the sine function. So with that, that means that we're going to use the chain rule. So that means we're going to use the chain rule. So here's the way we're going to do it. We're going to say, OK, that's plus the sine of y times y prime. Go look back at the chain rule, and that's what we did. We, we took, um, took the derivative. Actually, I didn't take the derivative, so I need to write this as cosine of y times y prime. I took the derivative of the cosine, left y alone, and then I differentiated y. Now, if you look at what it says, it's saying, write this in terms of u only. Right now I have it in terms of y and u. So one thing I could do is instead of writing y, I could write 4u squared plus 5, because that's what y is. Now let's think about what this is. Let's think about y prime. Let's go over here on the side and think about well, what is this y prime? y prime, another way of writing it would be dy over du because those are the variables that we're using. If this is that if that's what we have, then if we take this equation right here, isn't that also equal to 8u? Because if we differentiated that equation y, in terms of u, we just have 8u. That means our final answer on this would be 6u squared plus cosine 4u squared plus 5 times 8u. So go back and replay that if you're, if you're a little confused on it. 
and take a look at where everything, what happens and what we did with this and how we ended up manipulating it. But that's our final answer. That is the derivative of that original thing in terms of you only. So let's take a look at this. Pause it and see if you can do this one all by yourself. Okay, now if you're back with me, I'm going to go through this one and I'm going to write this down. So if I take this first thing and I differentiate it in terms of, e, of, of V, or if I differentiate then, yeah, in terms of V, I would have 8 V cubed minus 2 cosine U times u prime. Now, u prime is the same thing as du or dv. Well, if I take this equation right here and I actually differentiate it, what I would have is I'd have 2v. So my answer then that I could write is 8 v cubed minus 2 cosine u, but that's v squared minus 3, times u prime, which is 2 v. There's my answer. That's, a, that's the derivative of that original thing in terms of v only. So it's just a matter of playing with variables, just playing with the variables and adjusting to whatever we, we need. So let's take a look at this. Now we're asked to find dy dx in terms of x and y. Notice dy dx is the same thing as y prime. So if I'm going to differentiate this equation that I started out with right here, if I'm going to take the derivative what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform that on the variable y, but anytime I see a y, I just have to make sure I look at the chain rule on this. So if I take this, this would be 2y, because I deal, dealt with the squared, so 2y to the first, times y prime, because I do need to differentiate y, equals negative 3x squared plus y prime. Now y prime is what I'm supposed to solve for. So I'm just going to take this and, use, and do algebra use the algebra I'm just going to solve for y prime. So I can do that, that's not too bad. What I'm going to do is I am going to subtract y prime from both sides, and then I would have that. What I can do now is I can factor out a y prime, and this would be 2y minus 1 equals negative 3x squared. And then finally, divide by 2y minus 1 and that is my answer. That is dy dx. So the big thing is when I differentiated y I needed that y prime because I'm differentiating with respect to a variable x that happens to kind of be attached to y but not really. Go ahead and stop this see if you can do that problem. Okay, if you're back with me, I'm taking the derivative of this. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to differentiate. Using the rules that I already have. 
Derivative of zero is just zero. Derivative of negative two y squared be negative four y times y prime. Again, when I differentiate y, I need to have that y prime attached to it. Plus two x plus one. If I now solve this for y prime, I could move the 4y times y prime over to the left side. Still the 2x plus 1 left over there. And if I divide by 4y, I end up with 2x plus 1 divided by 4y. In all of these types of questions, the x's and the y's are going to be all mixed up in the same thing, and that's okay. It's not a, it's not a big deal. We can just use, um, we can usually find the, the point for all of them. So let's take a, take a look at this one. You can go ahead and pause it if you want, and then come back and I will do this one for you. So we're going to differentiate this. I'm going to differentiate that 3y, negative 3y. So this is negative 3 times y prime. Differentiate the 1 at 0. You wouldn't have to write that, but I'm going to show you that I'm going to differentiate everything in here. Differentiate y cubed. 3y squared times y prime. Again, whenever I differentiate y, I'm going to have that y prime. Differentiate um, negative, or yeah, minus 3, minus x cubed. So negative 3 x squared. Differentiate y squared. I get negative 2y again, but then this is times y prime because I was differentiating y on that one. Now I look at I got a lot of different y prime terms. I'm going to collect all the y prime terms on the left side and move everything else onto the right side. So y prime terms I have is minus 3y prime minus 3y squared times y prime plus 2y times y prime equals 3x squared. If I factor out a y prime, I have minus 3 minus 3y squared plus 2y equals 3x squared. So y prime, which is what I'm supposed to find, remember this is another, another word for that is y prime, is 3x squared divided by negative 3 minus 3y squared plus 2y. And then I'm done. Okay, last example. Last example, now I'm going to find it but I'm also given a point that I'm going to have to evaluate it at. So let's go through the process and just find y prime again. We take the derivative of this. We got 0 because the derivative of negative 3 is 0. Derivative of y is y prime. Derivative of minus 3x cubed minus 9x squared. Derivative of negative y squared is negative y negative 2y times y prime. Again, when I differentiate y, I'm going to need the y prime there. So bring the power down, raise the power by 1. Next one, 3y squared times y prime. <clears throat> if I go through and solve this for y prime, negative y prime plus 2y y prime minus 3y squared y prime equals 9x squared. If I just move everything around. If I factor out a y prime, this is negative 1 plus 2y minus 3y squared equals 9x squared. 
divide, I got y prime is equal to 9x squared over negative 1 plus 2y minus 3y squared. So next thing I do is just put these in. Put this x and y in, and that would be my answer. So my answer is y prime is equal to 9 times negative 2 squared over negative 1 plus 2 times 3 minus 3 times 3 squared. Probably simplifies. Not too worried about it, but that's the answer. I guess if you want me to simplify this, this would be um, 36 over negative 1 plus 6 minus 27. So you can get that. 36 over negative 22 probably reduces, but whatever. That's it. Good luck. Take your time with these and make sure you check your mistakes if you make them.